Let me tell you the truth. We live in a, in a society today that they have twists what the word of God is really trying to tell us. And today my intention is to bring you back to the original plan that God has for all of us. You see, we live in a society today that we visit a church on a weekly basis. And we come to church because we want to seek from God. But what really happens is people come, they search for God in the Sundays, and then they go back and they forgot about the whole thing through the whole week. But and then they come back Sunday and then again they, they visit. But God said very clear, I don't want that you just visit. I want that you dwell. The word of God says, those that dwell under the most high blessing of God. Amen? So there is a difference. God, I see many times through Jesus Christ, when he walked among us, he was visiting cities. He was visiting places. And, and I noticed that for whatever reason, the Bible says that he went many times to a house. It's the house of Martha and Lazarus and Mary. Why did he went back to that? They were their family members? No. But probably Martha knew how to cook a good fried chicken with collard greens. I don't know. Maybe Jesus found himself comfortable in that place. But for whatever reason, Jesus was going back to the house of Lazaro and Martha. And you and me, we need to understand that there is a big difference of having the presence of God passing by than staying with us. How many guys want a visitation from God? Two people. The rest are lost. How many of you want a visitation from God, my friends? How many guys want that God visit your home, my friends? Anybody? Anybody? Yes? Okay, see, that's the problem. I don't want God to visit my house. I want God to dwell in my house, to live, to stay in my house. If you're going to give a hand clap to God, you better give a hand clap to God. See, the truth is, the Bible says that you and me, we are the house of God. We are the temples that possess the presence of God through Jesus Christ. Some of us will look like a big cathedral. It's the blessing of God. Over, Come on, relax. But what I'm saying is, God says that he will dwell in our hearts. There is even a promise that says, if you will prepare me a place, I will dwell among you. Today, I want to talk to you about that. What would you do if somebody that you admire, you will find out that wants to visit your house? What would you, what would you do? Let's say somebody you admire, somebody that you respect, somebody that, uh, and then you hear, hey, this person wants to visit your house. I know for sure that all of you ladies, even men, will start to clean the house. Yes or no? Hey, come on, be honest. Yes or no? You will clean the house, right? Well, I can leave right now, and I already preached to you, my friends. You hear me what I said? You will clean your house. Because you won't want this person to feel uncomfortable jumping in my house through the toys of my kids. Am I right? Or, or maybe because he will sit down and it's dusty. How many know what I'm talking about? Or the play will be kind of dirty, not clean enough. You will be embarrassed. You will say, I, I, I will try to do whatever I can so my guests feel comfortable. So my guests feel welcome. My friends, it's time that you and me, we start to clean our hearts so Jesus can feel welcome. Now, don't, come on, you better give a hand up to God. Not only to visit, but to be in our place. Amen? Amen. See, that's what I want to try to talk to you today. I want to talk to you about the importance of dwelling in the presence of God. God doesn't have favorites. He have people devoted to him. Somehow we have bought into the mentality. That man reaching his success must be a favorite to God. No, 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 no. It's not like that. And the truth is, the never position can define if you're really walking in the presence of God. Talent can give you position. But only the presence of God can give you the character to stand through the position through time. Amen. There's a story in the Bible that is going to help us so much. I talk about this during the retreat. And the retreat is going to hear this a little bit more. They've been, talk, they've been hearing about it. But I failed to talk about this in church. In 2nd of Kings, in the book of, second book of Kings, chapter 4, there's a story over there about a woman called the Shunammite lady. Did I say it right? 
Yeah? Good. The Shunammite lady. Those names are weird in the Bible. So the Shunammite lady, because she was from that region. And we're going to see four people here. That they, these four people represent different things. Number one, we're going to hear about the prophet Elisha. He represents God himself. Then we're going to hear about the Shunammite lady. And this represents the church. And then we're going to hear about the husband of the Shunammite lady. Shunammite? Did I say it right? Shunammite lady? We don't know nothing about it, but only one thing. That he was old. He was what? Old. And that represents, listen, the old religious spirit that wants to be in our churches. And then there's going to be a boy. And that is going to be the fruit. Say with me, the fruit. Of our devotion to God, my friends. We're going to talk about that. So let's read right now for a few minutes. It says in chapter 4, verse 8. It says, one day Elisha, he's the prophet representing God. Went to Shanum. Or Shanum. Shanum. Forget about it. And a well-to-do, please pay attention, woman, was there who urged him to stay for a meal. So whenever he came by, he stopped there to eat. Okay, let's stop right here. It says that there was a prophet going by or passing by. And then the lady says, prophet, would you like to eat? Would you like to eat? I got some, I got some uh, pork shops going on right now. We, 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 you know, I got some... Uh, or maybe some fish, and I got some broccoli and mashed potatoes. And anybody want some of that right now? I'm, I'm hungry. You know, I'm gonna be honest with you. You know, so, and the prophet stopped that day there, and he ate. And it says that every time he passed by, he would stop right there to eat something. Now, I'm sure the food of the lady was good to the prophet because when you go to a restaurant, and as good as it is, look at me right now. If the restaurant makes you feel up, your stomach upset, would you go back to that place? I'm asking, yes or no? Would you see a rat going around that place? Would you go back to that place? Okay, let me tell you all the restaurants they got. No, I'm just kidding, okay? How many know that we live in New York City and this is true, my friends? All right. <laughs> okay, I'm just kidding. But it's true. You will, not, you will never go back. But something was good about the food of the lady because the prophet was coming back. It's like me going back to my restaurant to do breakfast. I like this restaurant. Something good was going on in there. And then look at what happens in here. So she said to her husband, I know that this man who often comes our way is a holy man of God. Let's make a small room in the roof and put it in it a bed and a table, a chair and a lamp for him. Then he can stay. You hear me? He can what? Stay. She says, then he can stay there whenever he comes to us. Hallelujah. I'm already getting excited about the teaching right there. See, the lady is saying, you know, honey, to the old man, listen, I don't know what it is. But every time this man comes by, something good happens to our home. How many believe that when we usher the presence of God through a man of God, the word of God teach many years before that a blessing from God would stay in that house? Yeah, yes or no, my friends? Yes, of course. So the lady says, I don't know, hon, but every time the prophet comes and eat, the beans become multiplied. And the fish, it tastes good for many days. So she said, I don't want only him to visit us. Can we make a room for him? Can we, do, can we do something so he can stay with us? Now you got to understand that the lady represents the church. The church that is willing to change. The church that is willing to do whatever it takes to keep the presence of God. I pray every day that we become that church, my friends. The church that is willing to do whatever is necessary so we can keep the presence. Not only visitations once in a while. That's why God, my friends, cannot do what he wants to do. Because we don't have enough people in the churches really looking for this. Then it says that he went to the husband. Said, let's do a change. Let, let, let's just put in there a bed. And it talks about four things that we're going to talk in a few minutes. A table, a chair, and a lamp. And then it says, 
that they did this. Now, let me stop right here for a moment. Because it says that she did it. So, but something is special, she says. So he can stay. Here's the bottom line. This is the title. You can play the title right now. It's time to prepare your room. It's time to prepare your room so God can stay in your house. Are you with me? She said, let's build it, but let's also prepare. Let's put in there a bed. Let's put in there a table. Let's put in there a chair. Let's put in there a lamp. Now, there is a lot of meaning in it. Have you ever been close to an elderly man or elderly person, elderly woman? Anybody? Yes. yes? Have you ever had the, the opportunity, the blessing to be close to them? Yes? Yes, yes or no, they're very unique people. The daylight change. No. I'm asking you, the daylight change. No. no! Elderly people don't like change. I was close to one once. They wake up at the same time. They eat the same thing. They eat the same breakfast. They do the same activities. And when you want to break their patterns, they go crazy. How many know what I'm talking about right now? So see, the old man represents the religious churches or the religious church that don't want to do changes in order to bring the presence of God. We have our way. We have our agenda. Well, let me tell you something. As long as I'm the pastor of this place, we got no agenda. It's his agenda. And we're going to change whatever we got to change. You better give a hand clap to God. If God said change that, how many of you guys know me already enough that I will change everything? Did you believe that? I am like that. I'm sick of his presence, not the numbers of the people. That comes as a result. Amen? Now, it says that for whatever reason, he was a wise man. Maybe he didn't want to change. I don't know you've been living with people. But I remember living with people that they like to move the furniture every day. Or every day. Every. They clean it and then they have the same furniture, but they keep on moving the furniture. When I married Gladys, she was like that. You know, the, she was moving the sofa. She was moving the TV. And I said, what in the world you just did? I'm cleaning. I think it looks better like this. And then I came back two weeks later from a traveling. And then she, I said, everything is moved again. Yeah, I was thinking that it looks better like this. And, and I realized that she was moving stuff. You know why? She wanted to be perfect and comfortable for us as a family. But with the time, I also saw, saw something. Would you like to know something? She stopped moving the things. I'm not saying we're getting old. But you know what? Let's just leave the sofa there. You know, forget about it. You know? <laughs> so if you are the kind of people that you don't like change, <clears throat> you get to know, okay? Why do we have to have a Metro Fest next week? <clears throat> Why we cannot just come, sing, and do? Got it? We got to do anything we got to do in order to make God, the prophet, comfortable in our house. And then it says something beautiful. Let me keep on reading over here. So he can stay. One day when Elijah came, Elijah came, he went up to his room and lay down there. He said to his servant Jesse, call the Shunammite lady. So he called her and she stood before him. Elisha said to him, tell her you have gone to all these travel for us. It's not easy. Look at me. To prepare your room is not easy. The prophet realized you went through all this travel. Listen, look, okay, you're not paying attention. You're going to have to go through some kind of travel to fix your house. You're going to have to go through some kind of travel to clean in the physical. Maybe you need to go back home and throw away some movies that you have in there. Say, nah, they're good. How about, can you see them in front of me? You feel embarrassed in front of me. Imagine, I'm not there all the time, but Jesus is. How about that music? How about those books? I'm not saying everything is wrong. But I'm saying, would Jesus feel comfortable to see that program with you? Oh, I want God in this house. I want the blessing of God in this house. Do you? Because if you want the blessing of God, you better prepare a room for him to stay. 
I got your attention now, right? Should I continue? Should I continue? He says, tell her, you have gone through all this trouble. Now what can be done for you? Can we speak in your behalf to the king or the commander of the army? She replied, I have a home among my own people. What can be done for her? Elisha asked. Jesse said, well, she has no son and her husband is old. Then Elisha said, call her. So he called her and she stood in the doorway. About this time, next year, Elisha said, you will hold a son in your arms. Well, what? Wow. But it was impossible. Why? Because the man was old. We don't even know if she was, she wasn't able to bear a child. We don't know the reason. But it was impossible. But listen, when you keep the blessing of God in your house, the impossible is going to become possible. So you better give a hand clap to God. Amen? How many of you want the impossible in your house? Keep the presence of God in your house. Amen? And look at what it says over here. I like, I like this. I like this. I like, I like this lady. I like her. I want many ladies like that and men in my life. I actually want to become like that. She's, he said, you will hold a son in your arms. And then she said, no, my Lord. What did she say? No, my Lord. She object. Don't mistake your servant. Oh, men of God. And in other words, I didn't do this so you can bless me. Oh, my goodness. If I can have more people that pray like that. So many times you and me, we seek God because we know God can give us something. But this lady went in a devotion to God. The kind of devotion that you and me we need to have. What kind of devotion? The one that want to honor God. Not expecting something from God. Just because we know that he's worthy. He already saved us. And he needs to discern, I mean, receive the best from us. Amen? You're going to give a hand clap to God. You better give a hand clap to God. What are you saying, pastor? This lady was saying, I didn't do all this so you can bless me. I'm not coming to church so you can bless me, God. But the truth is, how many know that many people come to church because they want the blessing from God? <clears throat> yes or no? Yes. Man, I'm in the wrong crowd. Yes or no? Yes. Have you ever seen people that say, Oh, I need God. I need a miracle. God does a miracle and we never see them again. Yes. Am I right or am I wrong? Yes. What kind of people are you going to be? You need a miracle? Bring God into your house. Clean whatever needs to be clean. But once the miracle is done, you need to realize that you're going to keep serving God with and without the miracle. Yeah, you can give a hand up to God. Some of you will like, go like, you want to give a hand clap to God who cares about the rest of the people. She said, no, I didn't do this. We need to be like that. I'm going to stop right there. We need to be like that. We need to see God without expecting necessarily something from him. We seek him and we want to honor him because we love him. People come to me and they bless me. But they bless me because they want something from me. Do you understand? But the people that I keep close to me more is the people that looks for me without expecting nothing from me. Something so important. It says here that she says, no, 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 please don't, 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 don't do that. But the woman became pregnant, and the next year, about the same time, she gave birth to a son, just as Elisha had told her. Can we give glory to God? Can we give glory to God? And some of you clapping and say, like, what are we clapping? What are we clapping? Because whatever God promised is going to complete it. I'm, a, I'm here saying, whatever God promised, he's going to complete it. Do you have a promise from God? Do you have a promise from God? Keep God in your sight, and he will complete the promise. Amen? But I want to go back a little bit of the story when she was preparing the room. It says that she placed in there four items. Can you remind me what was the first one? What was the first one? A bed. The bed represents, my friends, rest. Rest. We all have beds in our homes. And the bed represents rest. You don't go to work to your bed. Sometimes my wife is working so hard that she brings a laptop into the bed. And I told her, hey, 
Hey, you want to work? Go back to the table. You do that, Pastor? Yes, I do that. Because the bed, we're going to rest in the bed. Are you with me? And I learned myself to not bring the job into my bed. When we there, we rest. We rest. So the lady placed a bed. Why? Because she knew that the man needed rest. But that is more deeper than just placing a table up a bed, my friends. If you want to have God in your side and keep it in there, you need to have a relation with him, not only when you come and ask for things. You want me that I visit your house? When I visit your house, once I'm there, let me just enjoy you and your family. Don't invite me because you want to ask me or want to tell me a gossip. Are you with me? I said, Pastor never visited me. He never visited me again. Well. <laughs> Pastor always visits these people. Well. God wants to rest with you. Of course. He loves you. And whatever you ask, even before you ask, he knows that you have that need. But you need to become in a position of rest, knowing by faith that he's going to take care of that no matter what. As long as he is with you. Come on, you better receive the revelation. You need to have a, revel uh, a relation with God where you enter yourself in rest. Amen? You depend on him and you rest. Now, he also plays something in there. She also plays Another thing in there. What was the other thing? What was it? A table. Yes. Why a table? Well, the table represents communion. Represents what? Communion. In my house. Now, going back to the beds. How crazy, before I finish. Going back to the beds. How crazy that today you can find a bed in $25,000. I'm not kidding. There are certain beds that cost $25,000. You and me, we sleep in the ones that cost 200 or 300. No wonder why we got messed up and everything in there. <laughs> but I'm serious, right? 25,000. Why? They shake. They, they, for the ones that snore, you move them. There. Whatever. You inflate the thing. And they go, Shh, whatever. <laughs> I don't know what I'm talking about, right? But what it has to do with that? Why society is doing all that? Because society is trying to find rest as much as they can. I mean, how many believe that you can have the best bed in the world you don't have Jesus Christ in your heart? You're never going to have rest, my friends. But you can have the cheapest bed in the, but if you got Jesus Christ. You're going to wake up like new every morning. Because, come on, you better give a hand clap to God because you are in a rest in his relation. I'm sorry, in your relation with him. Amen? Enter into the rest, my friends. Any Christian that is like, huh, I don't know, huh, I don't know. You're not in the rest. How are you doing, Pastor? I'm in peace, man. I got struggles, but I fixed them right away, and I'm in peace. I'm in peace. But everything is turbulence around you. Yes, around, inside, I'm in peace. When I go to sleep, I sleep. Who knows me? Who knows me? You know me, right? When it's time to sleep, what did I do, Pastor Simon? It's time to sleep. Because you know what? I'm not going to waste my sleep. But you got a lot of stuff going on. Yes, I do. But the numbers are in red. Yeah, they are. But the, the leg is not getting fixed. I know. But when it's time to sleep, I sleep. You know why? Because through my time when I sleep, he's still working. Come on, you better give a hand up to God. Amen? And if I don't sleep in the night because I'm preparing something... As the people that is close to around me. I sleep during the day. I sleep when I need to sleep. Because I'm in peace with God. You need to be in peace with God. Amen? Amen. Number two. It says a table. Are you learning? Yes. A table. Why a table? Well, the table represents, like I said a few minutes ago, communion. In my house, your house, we have this habit that sometimes we like to eat watching TV. Because we like, well, that's a way that we fellowship. But sometimes we want to communicate something special. And guess what do we do? We turn it off the TV and we go what? To the table. 
and we talk in the table. We have communion. It's something a little bit more serious. And I'm going to teach you something, ladies. Why do you think your man, okay, I think you're not getting it. If you want to communicate something to your man, if you have years, you learn already this. When do you talk to your man? Before you feed him or after you feed him? <laughs> the lady's like, after I feed him. Why? Because when he's been fed, what happened? You got him. You got him. Yes or no? Right? That's the way it works. Yes, or no? it is the way it works. Now, here's the thing. The lady plays a table. Because she knew he needed to have a moment where he was going to eat, where he was going to work. But what if this has to do with us? Your relation with God, it has to be in a daily basis communion with him. You need to have communion with him. Did you, did you eat every day? I'm asking yes or no? Yes, yes or no? Yes. And some of you like three or four times, am I right? <laughs> the table was to remind or to remind us that you and me, we need to go back to him on a daily basis. To have communion with him. And then the next thing was a share. A what? And by the way, if you remember with the table, the Bible says in Revelation 3.20, that God is knocking one. The door is calling, and whoever will hear this voice, to whoever, he will come in and what? And dine. Am I right? Did anybody want to dine with Jesus? I imagine how packed would be this church if I were to say, for real, for real, and advertise, come and dine with Jesus. I mean, I'm not talking about like only like for a banquet. I'm talking about like real Jesus. How big will be the lines, my friends? Huh? Millions of people. Am I right? You know what's the sad part? Jesus is in our table. What kind of conversations are you having as you eat with your family? He is there. I'm not saying to put a table and say, Jesus, you sit over. But he's there. Am I right? He wants to have communion. And then a share. Number three, a share. All right? So he placed a share over there. Now the share represents what? Say it out. Authority. Yeah, that's right. Authority. Because kings have what? A share. And they reign from what? From their share. Why a share? Because God wants us to remind us that as we have rest in his presence, having communion with him, we also can possess God's authority. What are you talking about? Where is Jesus right now? According to the Bible, where is Jesus? He's sitting at the right hand. He's what? Sitting at the right hand of God, interceding for you and me. Come on, you better give glory to God. What am I saying right now? God wants that as we come into prayer or into intimacy with God that we remember that we have his authority that Jesus has to stand up to battle no why he's sitting because he's already overcoming everything a king that is sitting in his chair it means that his kingdom is in peace that he has governed or conquered everything needs to be conquered so Jesus is sitting down right now, not standing and fighting. He already came to fight, and he went to the cross for you and me. But at the third day, he resurrected, and he conquered that, and he took the keys of the kingdom of darkness, and he says that he gave it to you and me to establish his kingdom in this earth. So it means that you and me, we have the authority. We have the same authority. So you better give a hand up to God and not be intimidated when you come in prayer knowing that God is at your side. Amen? Man, I'm going to buy this CD by myself. I'm going to download it in iTunes. Are you getting what I'm saying? Because I'm about to finish. Are you ready? It says also that a lamp. He placed a lamp. I mean, she placed a lamp for him. Why a lamp? Simple. The lamp represents to become witness. To have a light. 
personal light. Now you need to understand in those days you were not connected to the electricity, the lamp. There were lamps that were through oil. That it was taken from what's the what's the what's the best the from the olive. But in order to have that oil, they needed to crush what? The oil. You want to have personal light? You're going to need to be crushed, my friend, first. So that's why the Word of God says, rejoice when you go through difficulties in life. Why? They're crushing you. Why? So you can become a better light of the darkness, my friends. Oh, you better give glory to God. Yes, somebody says hallelujah. Yes. You're going through what you're going through so you can become a witness. Amen. Enter into the rest. Have communion with him on a daily basis. Know that his authority is with you. And don't ever forget that thy authority is to become witnesses. Wow. I like it. Do you like it? It's not over yet. Would you like to finish the story? This is the best part. Can I tell you now the finished story? This is so funny. You know what I did to my Bible right now? I never use the Bible because I have it in my, always in my iPad. And I go like this. So right now I put my finger in the thing and I went like this. <laughs> you know how I always put the thing in the iPad and I go like this? I went to the Bible and I went like this. <laughs> that, was a very, that was a very funny moment. I went like, why is that? <laughs> Man, we are so tech right now. But it was a funny moment. You know how I always go like this? But I don't have to. So I went like, what the, okay, it's not working. <laughs> Let me finish with this. Uh, so the child grew, and one day, I can stop here for hours. It says the child grew. Your promise is going to become stronger every day. Amen. Oh, come on, you better give a hand clap to God. Amen. But here it is. And one day he went out to his father, who was with the rippers. My head, my head, he said to his father. His father told a servant, carry him to his mother. That's what the religious spirit always does. Take him to church. Church can fix it. You know what? Yes. But church can fix nothing if God is not in church. The only one that can fix the thing is the king of kings and the lord of lords, my friends. Come on, you better give a hand clap to God. But, but that, that was the religious. Let's go to church. No, no. Let's go to the presence of God. Take it to his mother. All right. After the servant had lifted him up and carried him to his mother, the boy sat on her lap until noon, and then he died. And then what? And then he died. What are you going to do if you promise it seems to be dead? What are you going to do if everything is going bad? Even when you have prepared your heart, your room for the king. What are you going to do? What are you going to do? You need to understand that it probably is going to happen that. It says that he died. But this lady knew something. And we got to become like this lady. It says she went up. She went what? She went up and laid him on the bed of the man of God. And, oh, come on. She knew in this room, something is cooking every day. So if I want my miracle, I'm going to go to the place that something is cooking. You better come every Sunday because God is cooking something. Oh, God is cooking something in this place. He's cooking something. Amen? Man, I'm inside. How many of you are hungry for God, my friends? How many of you are hungry from God? Hallelujah. <laughs> I'm excited today, man. This is a good service. But it says that she took the kid to the place where something was happening. I'm sure she woke up in the mornings when she was cleaning the house and she heard the men of God praying and the presence of God coming to that room and she would not understand but she, I'm sure living on a daily basis as she was cooking for everybody in the family, she maybe hear thunder in that place because when God shows up, something powerful happens. So she said, oh my God, oh my God, I'm not going to be defeated by this moment. I'm going to take my son into the place where something happened. 
Come on, you better give glory to God, my friends. We got to be in the place where something is happening. And then it says that she took his son into the man's room, the man of God. Then shut the door and went out. She called her husband and said, please, please send me one of your servants and a donkey so I can go to the man of God quickly. Quickly. And then the story says very clear. They went and find the man of God. The man of God says, I'm not going to let you go. But you said, I'm going to stay with you in this difficult time. Then Elisha in verse 29. I'm going to go to the 30. But the child of the mother said. Oh, I'm sorry, not that one. It goes all the way to 30. Uh, yes, 32. When Elisha reached the house there, was a boy laying dead on his couch. What do you do, my friends, servants of God, when you go to your house? I told you it was going to be special today. The people from the retreat said, I can be special after, oh yes. What do you do, servant of God, when you go to your house and in your bed is laying down something dead? What do you do in that moment? Were you going to get intimidated? Or are you going to do what you know what to do? Well, the man of God found the kid. He went in and shut the door on the two of them and prayed. And what? And pray to the Lord. He prayed to the Lord. And then it says that the son resurrected. That's what it says? No. No. He prayed, but nothing was happening. What are you going to do when you pray and nothing is happening? Okay, well, wait a minute, wait a minute. What are you going to do when you pray and, and nothing is happening now? Okay, now you want to help somebody that has been good to you. And now it seems, oh my goodness, this is for me, not for anybody else. What are you going to do when you're trying to do something for somebody that's been good to you, but you don't have it? Apparently, it's not happening. It's kind of like God not really listening. It. What are you going to do? You're going to stay angry with God and say, Why have I been serving you all these years? And now that I want to be good to this lady, you're not supporting me. What are you going to do? You're going to let the circumstances defeat you. You, do, you better do like the man of God. It says, okay, okay, you know what? I'm praying. Nothing is happening. Well, I guess uh, he, he started to believe by faith. And look at what happened here. It says, he went in and shut the door and prayed. And then, and then it says, then he got on the bed and lay upon the boy, mouth to mouth, eyes to eyes, hands to hands. As he stretched himself out upon him, the boy's body grew warm. Grew warm, but it still is not happening. I mean, something is getting warm. Ay, 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 hallelujah. Would you going to pray? Maybe nothing is going to happen, but you got to get involved, my friends. And he got involved. Are you with me? And when you got involved, something's going to start to get warm. I, I used to play with my kids about hiding stuff. Right? And then as they were looking for them, I told them, cold, cold, cold. They're like, cold. Where, daddy? Cold, cold. But as they start to get closer, I said, you're getting warm. It's what happened. When things start to get warm, my kids start to get excited. Oh, are we getting warm? Are we getting warm? You know what? He starts to get excited by faith saying, hey, it's getting warm. I guess God is still working even if I don't see the situation done yet. God is still is working. You better give a hand clap to God. God is still working. Even when the miracle is not there. Oh, come on. You better give glory to God. God is still working. Even when your miracle is not completed. I still don't have my house. I still don't have the healing. That doesn't mean that he's not working. He's getting warm. He's getting warm, the situation. Hallelujah. And then it says that he... And stretched himself upon him. The boy's body grew warm. Elisha then turned away and walked back and forth. Still, the miracle was not there. So he walked. He was like, Come on, God. Do not embarrass me, Lord. I know you are with me. I've been praying before. You have done it before. This lady has been good to you. But God, I cannot twist your arm. But do what you have to do, Lord. Ah. And then got into the bed and stretched out upon him once more. Hey, the first time didn't work. Maybe I did something wrong. 
But you know what? I'm going to try again. If you still don't see your miracle, it's up to you. Look at me now, eye to eye. If you don't see your miracle, it's only up to you. You're going to give back, you're going to give up, or you're going to try again. I'm here to tell you, prepare the room and try again. He will do at the right time what he promised to do. Try again. Try again. Amen. The boy is kneed seven times and opened his eyes. Come on, give glory to God. Give glory to God. Give glory to God. His knees seven times. Elijah, Simon, Jesse said, call the shit of my lady. And he did when she came. He said, look at what he said. Take your son. She came in and took his son and kissed him. That's what it says. No. There's another thing to learn from this shana my lady. It says, please, mama, if your son would be dead, and now the prophet says, come, your son is there. What will you do? You will run to your son and grab your son and kiss him and say, thank you. Yes or no? Yes or no? But that's not the kind of woman she was. That, oh, come on, you better give glory to God. That's not the kind of woman she was. When the prophet says, here is your son, lady. The lady knew better. It is says that she fell down to the feet of the prophet and said, to God be the glory. I knew you were going to do it. Come on, you better give glory to God right now. You better, better, better give glory to God and praise him. What are you saying, pastor? She knew. Always the God was a priority. And at the time of his miracle, at the time of her miracle, she didn't get lost with the miracle. I pray sometimes, God, don't give them their miracle. They're not ready for their miracle. Because if you prosper them in such a way, we were never going to see them again. Would you pray like that? Not necessarily, but what I've been praying is, do it at the right time, God. If they're not ready. My son wants a Ferrari. I'm never going to give him a Ferrari. If he end up with a Ferrari, because God gave him a Ferrari. Why are you not going to give him right now a Ferrari? Are you crazy? That I want to kill my son? It's too much speed in his hands. So many times, it's too much miracle in your hands. You can handle the miracle. You can handle the miracle. It's too much. It's going to go to your head. And you're going to walk away from God, probably. But at the right time, you will have oh, the attitude of the lady. Hey, you will go to praise God. It says, and I finish, call her. And he did. When she came, he said, take your son. She came in, fell at his feet and bowed to the ground. Then she said, then finally, I'm sorry, she took her son and went out. Take your promise, Shunammai. It's yours now. It was great to have a son. The first time. <laughs> but now the promise was glorious. Why? Because the touch of God now was involved. It was great to have the first time the miracle of having a kid when they were not able. But to have a resurrection, that was something that seals anybody for the rest of their life. <laughs> Next time you feel. That your promise is dead. It's not. God is sealing you for the rest of your life. With a miracle that is going to stay forever. Amen. Give a hand up to God. Amen. And you believe it. And you believe it. Stand up on your feet. It's time to prepare our room. It's time to prepare your room. It's time to do what God is calling you to do. In order to not only receive a visitation, but to keep God in your house. I say, let's do whatever we got to do.